start all these uh, meetings off after we do our introductions and our pledges and so forth with an update from the, uh, the high school that we're, we're so graciously able to attend. And uh, if uh, Assistant Principal Mr. Faulkner, uh, where'd he go? He just walked in. All right, let, I'll switch hats. Yes, how are you? Welcome to Atascacita High School. And uh, uh, while we're waiting for him, um, you know, they've done such a great job of, of building a culture here in such a short period of time. Uh, the basketball team, I'm sure he's going to talk about this. They're ranked number one in the state, number three in the country. <laughs> they are currently 35-0. and 0. Uh, playing in the regional tournament this weekend in Dallas. And uh, without further ado, I don't want to steal his thunder. Mr. Faulkner. Thank you so much. I can honestly, good morning. I'm sorry, good morning. How are you guys doing? I can honestly say it is a great time to be an Atascacita Eagle at the Atascacita High School. There are so many great things happening on our campus. It, I couldn't dream of this four years ago when Mr. Daniels and myself and Mr. Perkins first came to this campus. Um, we pride ourselves, or our vision is four pillars, academics, athletics, fine arts, and student involvement. Our athletics, oh my gosh, girls swimming team won fourth in state. Uh, there were a 200 gold medal relay, fastest team in the state in 200 gold medal relay. So uh, girls soccer. Boys soccer continues striving, striving, going toward playoffs. The boys basketball team. We try not to jinx it. Um, so we only mention one game at a time. We literally have not looked at hotels or anything past this weekend. So if you ask us, we will not tell you anything, but we look forward to the next game. Our girls team also won. Uh, they were district, district champions as well, and they were also uh, – by district uh, champions as well, finishing out in the second round of the playoffs. Um, our student involvement, great student involvement. Uh, upcoming this weekend is Cardboard City. Uh, we currently have 179 students and adults signed up for Cardboard City to help the homeless uh, in the area. Uh, if you walk around Atascacita High School, you'll see multiple cardboard uh, boxes, uh, one toward the end of Red House that says home. Uh, they're really bringing great awareness to the homeless uh, in the area. Uh, even on the Atascacita website, you will see myself and Mr. Perkins and some of the other APs that are crammed into a box uh, to help those students promote Cardboard City as well. Also, we just received uh, recognition for having the, one of the campuses having the highest turnout rate for the blood drive. So our <coughs> students are doing a great job job donating blood to the area Gulf Coast Blood Regional Centers, and so we like to recognize them for that as well. Um, our fine arts, we had 91 singers uh, for Division I rating solo and competition. We also had 185 small solo and ensemble uh, competition members uh, for the fine arts for a solo and ensemble for choir. Um, we had one Gold Key Scholarship uh, or Scholastic Award for artwork, uh, Kurt Orzaga, he uh, is going to the, uh, he won vase for this weekend, one of the three students at our campus, and his artwork is actually on display in the Houston Museum of Natural, uh, of Fine Arts, and so it's great time to be an eagle. Uh, finally, academic-wise, we have two students, Carolyn Martin and Albert Trung. Uh, they're national merit finalists uh, that are representing our campus. I cannot say how great it is to be an Eagle, and we are soaring our wings and we're expanding every single day, uh, but we could not do it without the community involvement uh, that you guys bring forth to, to the area. The only good thing is, you, when you have a product of your success, is continuously getting more students uh, into the school. Um, we, we, at Atasca City, we make it work. Um, we have very little incidents. Knock on wood. Our students are, are re well respectful, and we consider this a melting pot. Our students get along with everyone, race, color, creed, ethnic, origin, what have you. They are very respectful to each one, 
and that just shows the type of community and the type of foundation that this community has laid, allowing everyone to be respected and represented by all. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. And we'll see you in Dallas, right? Yes, sir. All right. Good deal. I tell you, you know, we, we, a lot of spotlight is, is made on athletics uh, and, of course, the basketball team being ranked number one and undefeated gets a lot of the press. But as you can tell with the, some of the other uh, things in the academic areas and the other fine arts areas and so forth, uh, it's all about the whole child, not just the athlete, not just the, the, uh, the band member and so forth. It's about all kids. And that's what they've created here on this campus uh, is they really, really focused on student involvement. Uh, I've got a son that's in the eighth grade. He's coming over uh, to tour the campus. They're bringing all the eighth graders over and really talking about their clubs, their organizations, and things like that because their focus here is that an involved child is a successful child and they want every student on this campus with 3,400 students and growing to be involved in something to identify with, as they call it, the Atascocita High School. So uh, very proud of what the work they've done. Um, with that said, uh, I want to make one change, Jeremy, if that's okay. Do you mind waiting one person? I want to have Heath Rushing come up uh, and talk about not only are we having growing pains in Umbel ISD, but our beloved superintendent has announced his retirement and we're in the middle of a superintendent search. And I would like my colleague on the school board, Mr. Heath Rushing, to come and kind of give you an update on where we're at and how the process is going. So we're all equally sad. Um, that uh, this announcement was made. But I think the key to, to first recognize is that it is something that's uh, been planned. So it's not something that has uh, caught anyone off guard or by surprise. And it's been a process that we've been able to, to really work through very methodically uh, and, and have ample time to think through and, and, and plan for. And so for that, just on behalf of my colleagues on the board, I'd like to thank Dr. Sconzo publicly for that. Um, uh, for that uh, as, as we've uh, worked through this process to, to kick it off. Um, so what does the process look like? Well, it started by um, us recognizing that, um, that we weren't going to do this alone uh, as a board. Uh, we recognize that there are individuals and, and organizations and companies throughout the country that do this very, very well. Uh, so we did open up an RFP process. Um, we had, uh, I believe, three responses to that. Uh, interviewed all three uh, of those uh, firms, uh, superintendent search firms. Uh, one was sort of local to the Houston area, but very, very well known and respected. Uh, one was uh, through TASB, which is the state of Texas organization, Texas Association of School Boards. Uh, and the third was a national form uh, uh, co um, company called uh, Hazard Young and Atea. And so we went through the process of some lengthy interviews. Um, and we landed with uh, Hazard Young and, uh, and Atea. We kind of call them Hazard for short. So, uh, so uh, that's because, and, and the reason for that was because of the process that they laid out. Uh, we knew that this is not something we could rush through. Uh, it was something that was going to take time, commitment, a lot of energy, uh, and a lot of thoughtfulness to, to work through. So uh, we've laid out a process that in, includes strong community input, involvement, and engagement. And so a number of you in this room, I know, had the opportunity to participate in several focus groups that occurred uh, February 17th, 18th, and 19th. Um, they were here all day doing three days worth of community uh, assessment and engagement. Uh, so thank you in advance, or thank you for those of you that participated in that process. Uh, there were also some, uh, we had some targeted meetings for certain civic organizations uh, and groups throughout the community. We also had three open sessions every night of that week as well for anyone in the community to, to attend that were publicized on the website and through the paper. Um, and so what's next? Uh, we have finished that process and actually uh, on Tuesday of next week that will all culminate with what's called a um, leadership profile. 
that will be used to help us identify the characteristics that we, we want as a board as well as the community expects um, in a superintendent uh, to replace the big shoes of Dr. Sconzo. Uh, and at that point in time, on Tuesday of next week, then will we begin the process, or the, the, the firm will begin the process of screening interviews um, that will then begin to narrow down um, narrow down the slate. So we, we understand at this point that there is high, high interest in the position. Um, and so we're, we're very excited about that. Uh, so some of the work we've done over the past several years uh, that even predates me on the board has been well recognized. And it doesn't hurt being the reigning large district, best large district in the state of Texas. And so uh, so with that, I'll, I'll conclude. Um, anything else you want me to make sure to bring up, Mr. President? Good question. So we have not put any restrictions on candidates. And so uh, there, there, there could be internal candidates considered. Now, we will not be the ones doing the vetting. We think it's appropriate to let the uh, search firm vet those internal candidates as well so that it's all, all, all level playing field. That's right. So same, same process for internal and external candidates to be considered. We, yes. Good question. So our goal in the process is to have a decision made uh, for the candidate to actually begin July 1st. Um, and so with, with Dr. Sconzo's planning ahead and um, allowing us to work through this process, um, at that time, that individual will become the superintendent. Um, but Dr. Sconzo will be available um, between then and December of 2016 uh, in any capacity that the board and or superintendent would like him to be uh, in terms of a transition. And so it's very, very good uh, to have this uh, to be able to work through. Um, and in some cases, superintendent searches are, are not as planned out uh, and, 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 and we'll have the ability to, to have an ongoing resource to help with transition. So, uh, so we're very lucky to have that. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Turn it back to you. Oh, actually, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in trouble here for a second. You each have one of these, um, and while uh, that's not while I'm up here, I'm gonna s steal some time anyway. This is uh, uh, if, if you would all please consider this. This is going to be the fifth year that this has been hosted here. The last four years, I have taken my entire leadership team of 40 to 50 managers and directors and have found it to be an extremely valuable use of time. So please consider it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rushing. Uh, you know, I do want to add one thing to the uh, the, the history, and, and thank you for your comments uh, about your children coming through. I, too, came through the system here. I'm not probably as young as your kids, but uh, uh, I tell you, in 73 years, you, I want you to think about this for a second. The state of Texas changed to a K through 12 system in 1943. The average tenure of a superintendent for public schools is three to five years max. Since 1943, we've had four. We've had four. Uh, there's not many school districts can, can tout that track record. Uh, so yes, I, I do uh, want to thank Dr. Sconzo publicly for his service, thank him for his foresight in working with us to create this transition plan uh, so that it is seamless. So thank you again, Doc. <laughs> Next up, probably the most powerful individual in the room today 
He loves it whenever I introduce him. How many of you like the traffic around the Tascosita? All right, the head of transportation and mobility and everything else that Commissioner Mormon wants to put on him, uh, Mr. Jeremy Phillips. Thanks. You're welcome. I really appreciate that. So if you have any questions uh, before, he's going to stay here about two hours afterwards to answer any and all questions about mobility. You know, you, you introduced me as honorary. I want to make the record clear. I'm not honorable nothing, officially. <laughs> my, my wife has called me honorary, and she used some other words after that. But I, officially, I'm not honorable anything. So, um, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, I appreciate it. We, we always love coming to the uh, Tascosita BizCom. First of all, free food, uh, fantastic, and that was great. Thank you. And uh, the other thing is, is just look around. Every time we come, it's packed just like this. Um, and it's, it's just a great cross-section of the community, everybody involved, um, and, and thank you for having us. I'm, I'm going to be a little anticlimactic today. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to talk about, even though you're going to throw a lot of questions at me. Um, and, and there's good reason for that, um, and, uh, but I'll get started. First, I wanted to thank the Lake Houston Area Chamber. Um, how many people, raise your hand if you were able to go see the FM 1960 uh, exhibits that TechStop put on? Fantastic. Um, one of the great things about working in this area uh, is, is the chamber, and I'm not just trying to blow smoke. Uh, these guys were out front before this, this meeting even occurred. Uh, they were able to get all the documents, get it out there for you, not to be pressured to go to the state meeting. Uh, you were able to go into the chamber and visit and, and look at this stuff at your own leisure. I think that's fantastic, um, and, and, it, and it sure made for a much easier transition when the state came and opened up their uh, opened up their plans for the for the area. Um, we uh, and, and not only that, but they invited us to uh, to to come in and, and and work with the state early on to start looking at the plans and figuring out what they what they had going on. So, thank you again. Uh, it's a pleasure working with you guys, uh, and we'll continue to do so. On behalf of Commissioner Mormon, thanks for all that you do for us in this area. Uh, it's very greatly appreciated. Um, Dr. Sconzo, I wanted to tell you, where, where's he at? There he is. Man, what a trooper you are. Everybody's sitting around here talking about you leaving and about uh, your replacement, and you're just sitting back there as cool as a cucumber. And I just want to tell you, I, I, I want to, <laughs> that's right. I want to tell you, thank you. Um, you know, one of the first things that we did when we took on this area in Precinct 2 was engage the, the superintendents and, and their staff, uh, and specifically up here in the, in the Umbel ISD area. Uh, you guys have been fantastic to work with. We're going to hate to see you go. The, the, uh, uh, the great thing, though, is that uh, what you're leaving behind is fantastic. Uh, the staff that you guys put together has been great to work with. Uh, in fact, we're meeting, we're meeting with some of your staff later on this week to go over some things. Uh, it, it's a great partnership, and I think one that uh, we'll continue to have uh, for years to come. And, and, and you're a lot to do with that, and I want to say thank you personally uh, from a transportation planning standpoint. It's not every day you get to, uh, uh, to meet school districts that are, that are that willing to bring you in, because we can be the bad guy sometimes, so I appreciate it. Uh, so let's talk about uh, some things that happened since the last time I spoke. Uh, bond election passed in November. Uh, it kicked up a bunch of money. And not only did it pass, but it passed overwhelmingly. Um, and uh, what that means is, is hopefully over the next year, year and a half, we're going to see new monies come into the precincts, not just Precinct 2, but all the, all the precincts for uh, road and bridge projects, uh, as well as park bond money uh, and other projects that were listed in the bonds. Um, this area was very supportive of that effort, and we appreciate it. And uh, we did not waste any time. We, uh, uh, one of the biggest things uh, that, that we're aware of is the traffic issues that, that, that face the Tascacita folks uh, in the Kingwood area, in the Humble area, and all the way down in the Summerwood. Uh, we didn't waste any time. We're starting to work on uh, some things for uh, some of the corridors that we know need improvement. I know Woodland Hills is always on everybody's mind. Uh, we're we're, we're going to continue working on that. In fact, we're working on it today. It's one of the reasons why I got to jet out of here shortly. Um, that is a big one on the on the list, and we're hoping to come back and talk to you guys uh, shortly about uh, uh, you know what things are going to go on with the bond money, and we'll do that soon. Um, some of the things that uh, that are ongoing right now, uh, we've got 
uh, an ongoing uh, project for intersection improvements. In 2015, with the help of the Lake Houston Chamber, we uh, did an Atascacita mobility study. We identified some projects. We've been under design on some of those projects for the last few months. Uh, one of them is going to be Kings Parkway at FM 1960, uh, adding additional right turn lane at, for the southbound traffic on Kings Parkway so they can get onto FM 1960. Uh, that was one of the additions that, uh, that was recommended. So that uh, project is in design. Uh, we'll be sitting down meeting with the community uh, on, on the impacts that that might have at the intersection and figuring out what to do from there. We get a lot of cut through traffic coming into Atascacita, using that from Kingwood, as well as uh, uh, people just trying to find alternate routes to get anywhere away from Westlake Houston at, Will Cl at uh, 1960. So uh, that project uh, will be under construction by the end of the year, uh, and we hope to have that thing complete as well. So adding new pavement, it'll be about 250 feet of storage, so you can add a, we can add a lot of cars. And what that's gonna do is people going straight aren't going to hem up people going right and uh, that makes for a, a more efficient intersection uh, so that that's underway we're adding a left turn lane an additional one there'll be two left turn lanes at will clayton turning on to or excuse me uh westlake houston turning on to will clayton at the intersection so this will be you know adding a left turn lane on uh, uh westlake houston northbound to westbound will clayton and that is under design uh, anybody ever been through there before? Raise your hand. Yeah, you know, it's, a, <clears throat> it's a mess. Um, we're going to, uh, we're also going to make some additional storage on the, uh, uh, the left turn lanes on Will Clayton going northbound on uh, Westlake Houston as well. So what that means is, is we're going to add more capacity at the intersection to get cars through that intersection when the, when the lights turn uh, and, and, and make it available for the cars to go. Um, We've always said this, I'll reiterate, these aren't golden tickets. They're not going to solve the congestion problems. Uh, capacity is the issue. Uh, FM 1960 is going to be a, a real big one. Uh, that's a state project, not ours. Uh, we'll be watching it very closely. Um, and uh, uh, we'll be very interested in the overpass as well as what they're going to do below. Uh, you know, we want to solve congestion issues. We also want to make it viable for businesses. Uh, and, and be good partners uh, with both transportation as well as access. So we're going to be working with the state to make sure that, uh, that those things are taken into account, all the things that are, that are concerning to you, and, uh, and we'll continue to do so. Um, one of the things that we've done with the state, and we talked about this before, and this is the project that uh, it, it just keeps on giving, the CMAC project. It's a congestion uh, and air quality project that we've got going on. Uh, we've been talking about it for a couple of years. It feels like it's never going to happen, uh, but I do have some updates for you. What, what that project is going to do is put fiber optic cables uh, down Will Clayton between Tassita Road and Westlake Houston, connecting all the, the signals that we have and any future signals. They're also going to do the same thing up Westlake Houston from the railroad bridge that ties into Precinct 1's project of similar nature, and it'll go all the way up to the bridge going across to Kingwood. So what that's going to mean is we're going to get better efficiency on the signals. We're going to get better uh, ability to watch the signals from remote locations uh, and, and better responsiveness to bad signals, uh, power outages, and things like that. Um, what we're also going to do along Westlake Houston is uh, make additional left turn lanes at some of the median cuts. Um, and uh, there, there's a handful of them uh, that, that are in the works. Uh, but the two biggest improvements, and one, uh, something that we worked with the school district on, is uh, Will Clayton at June Forest, the signal that's there. The signal is taking forever to build. We're not really happy about the timing of it, uh, but it is part of that project, um, and we're going to put a signal in there. If anybody's ever been over there, we've had a, we've had a handful of accidents. It's a strange little area. It's right next to, next to a school. Uh, you have some line of sight issues, and there are a lot of kids walking along the, the, the sidewalks using the sidewalks as well as uh, the streets for, for pedestrian and, and bicycle traffic. So that signal right there we think is going to make that a whole lot safer for everybody involved and people getting out of the neighborhoods onto uh, Will Clayton. Um, the other thing that we're going to do as a part of this same CMAC project is add another left turn lane at Westlake Houston turning westbound on 1960. So what that means is, is the, uh, uh, yeah, yes, nice, yeah, yeah, um, uh, we're still, it's under, the it, design's been complete on all these projects that, that I just mentioned uh, in terms of the CMAC project. It's been awarded from TxDOT to a vendor. We are waiting for that vendor to acquire all the uh, materials, and it could be another uh, six months before they start construction. So 
Uh, it's a tech stop process. Uh, we love our partners at the state, but sometimes it's, it's, it's a little more fluid than, than, than we'd like. So right now we're thinking third, fourth quarter to see that thing underway. So um, I think that's important because uh, once we have these turn lanes in, especially at that Will Clayton in uh, 1960, or FM 1960, uh, excuse me, uh, Westlake Houston at FM 1960, when we have that turn lane put in there, what that's going to do is force the state to accommodate that turn lane with the ultimate overpass that'll go uh, and give us uh, dual dual lefts under there, uh, along with the rest of the service roads that'll be in and around there. So, very important aspect, and I think it's uh, the timing of it's really good as well. Um, we all know that that 1960 project they just started with the uh, with the, uh, the the public input. Uh, there's a long way to go. There's there I, I believe they're in schematic design which means uh, they've got a long way to go. And not only that, then they got to find the funding to do it. So in the meantime, we're going to be focusing on creating other alternatives uh, for north, south, and east, west mobility in the area um, because we're going to need them when they go under construction in 1960. So uh, we'll keep focused on that as well. Um, I think uh, those are the ones that, those are the projects that are, that are, that are in the works. Um, I want to reiterate, I understand Woodland Hills is ever, on everybody's mind. It's something that we're working on. Uh, it's in the works, uh, and we'll have more to, to follow on that uh, here in the next couple of weeks, we hope. A uh, couple other things that we're doing, uh, we do roads, bridges, and we also do parks. And uh, the precinct, along with the bond projects that were approved, uh, included money for uh, potential park location as well as trail connectivity here in Atascocita. If anybody's lived here longer than, than 10 years, you know that you know, north of 1960 developed uh, in, in Walden and those areas. Uh, those are older communities. A lot of them did not have sidewalks. Uh, a lot of them didn't have connectivity or trails. It just wasn't something that was, uh, was real big at the time. Uh, so we're going to go back and look and see if there's a way uh, that we can ultimately, and, and the goal is kind of connecting that Kingwood uh, trail system all the way down into future Greens Bayou trail systems uh, so that we have some type of amenity here uh, to where we can get out of our houses, get on some safe uh, routes uh, for us to, to, to utilize for recreation purposes. And that's bicycle, pedestrian traffic, and all that. Uh, we started working on that already. We've met with MUDs. Uh, as you can see, if you ever took a look at a map uh, in Atascocita, which I know you do, there's no property available anywhere. So that's not necessarily true, but it's very tight. So what we're looking at is using everything at our disposal to try to figure those things out. That means flood control channels and the, and the ditches and the rights of way that they have there, uh, looking at roads that we're improving to see if we can uh, put uh, sidewalks and, and trails there. Uh, and we'll be reaching out to you guys and, uh, to, to get some input from y'all about what y'all want here in the neighborhoods. Um, you know, we don't have a park presence here uh, for Precinct 2. Precinct 4 has a, you know, if you've ever been to Lindsay Lyons, which my kids have been there before uh, playing soccer, that place is, oh, man, that's got to be one of the busiest uh, sports parks in the, in the county. Um, you know, we're going to reach out to you guys and say, hey, what do you want? Because there are a lot of pocket parks. Communities have parks. Um, but what don't we have? And we'll, we'll figure out what that is together, and we'll move on, on trying to find out uh, uh, where to put those parks and, and, and what the timelines are on them. But we did put money towards, uh, towards that uh, for the future. But I think that's it for me. I know I kind of blew through all that really fast, uh, but uh, I wanted to leave it open for some questions. Uh, I'll be more than happy to take nothing's off the table uh, except for Woodland Hills. No, I'm joking. Go ahead, ma'am. <laughs> You talking about the stuff on uh, Westlake Houston down in Summerwood? Yeah. yeah. The you want the county answer or the text dot answer? Nah. Yeah. I, I I don't know on that one because I it's not our project, so I don't have the I don't have the the schedule on it. I know that uh, when we put the signals in over here at uh, well right down the road, uh, we put in at uh, Timber Forest and Eagle Springs. We put two signals at each one of those locations right here on uh, Will Clayton. Um, it took them about probably a a couple of weeks to get the signal heads on, and then it took another, uh, you know, couple of weeks for them to get the cabinet controller box programmed, set, and then opened up. Uh, they usually go really fast putting the poles, the mast arms up, and then once they hit the once they hit the mast arms, then it slows down for a minute while they try to get all the the technical stuff squared away. Because as soon as you put that 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 signal head up, 
you know, some people start stopping right away and it causes problems. So we try to, we try to bag them and keep them as, keep that whole transition as fluid as possible. That isn't a precinct two project, that's a precinct one project, but though I'm speaking on, on behalf of, you know, what we've seen on our signal projects before. Okay, so, I have a second question. yes ma'am. Are there any plans or anything in the works for Wilson Road and the Beltway area where it is a massive congestion during rush hour? Yeah. Because it's just bad there. And I hate to be that guy, but that's precinct four. Uh, and, and <laughs> But what I can hey, what I can say is 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 they've got reps here, and and you know w we can reach out to them and find out who the right person is for you to talk to, uh, if you want. Uh, I think there's a gentleman right over here from Precinct Four, uh, and we, we we can talk real quick. There you go. See, see how I did that? That was fantastic, man. You the man. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Well, we certainly understand the issues. Uh, you know, we talk about all the boundaries here. I will tell you that, that we have good partners in Precinct 4 and Precinct 1. Uh, they don't look at this as, as a, hey, draw this line here, don't come talk to me. Uh, it, it, it is truly a system over here, and it's a very unique system. We're pushed up against the lake. We've got uh, a river up to the north, uh, and, and everything in between is just kind of sandwiched in. So they understand that. Uh, our partners do at Precinct 4 and Precinct 1, and, and certainly we do. So I, I know I gave you a bureaucratic answer, but we are not that bad when we get into the planning. So, I'm good with this. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Well, <laughs> <clears throat> what uh, my understanding is is from, from basically business 1960 right there in Humble, uh, from, from that intersection all the way to the bridge uh, at Lake Houston. Uh, they're going to widen. Uh, 1960 to three lanes in both directions with a raised median. Um, and what they are also going to accommodate is an overpass, uh, an east-west overpass going over West Lake Houston uh, Parkway. And uh, so uh, that's a real basic description of what they're doing. Uh, it, it's actually much more massive than that. <clears throat> Go ahead, Jim. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. See, they still have it up. That's fantastic. I, yeah, I would encourage everybody to go take a look at it. Um, as you know, something that big is going to have a big impact here. Uh, we, we think about the transportation impact. There's going to be the landscape's going to change. Uh, it's one of those kind of projects. Um, that's a good thing, but you know we need to get a, get accustomed to what what we're about to get into. I'm sorry. Ladies first. Ladies first. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Sorry. That's precinct four. Uh, yeah, and, and, and I think that, and I can't speak for precinct four, but I will say generically, generically this area has a lack of options. Uh, I can tell you from our standpoint, we're trying to build you other options uh, to get to the Beltway. Um, and, and, and by doing so, I, I think that if we can get some of these corridors built that we're planning on, and I think what you'll see is a collective siphoning of traffic off these other other streets uh, to include ple places like Will Clayton to the to the west of uh, uh, Atascacita as well as Wilson as well as Westlake Houston uh, all those Mesa all those uh, could see some draw off of that if we get these corridors built yes ma'am <laughs> that's a good point and you know what I totally forgot about that one uh, we do have uh, Woodmere's developing uh, right there at, uh, uh, at the corner of uh, right at Eagle Springs at Timber Forest area. They're going to be extending Eagle Springs to the south, or excuse me, they're going to be extending Timber Forest to the south towards Eagle Springs. And, uh, and, and we'll, we'll extend that even further to the transition past Eagle Springs. So they will actually have four lanes going all the way through Eagle Springs on Timber Forest. Timber Forest is part of the thoroughfare plan for the city of Houston. It is slated over time, not, there's no particular timeline, it's just a line on a map. It's supposed to connect all the way down into Summerwood. 
where uh, Timber Forest is. Uh, uh, is uh, yeah, I think it's right, just north of the HB. Yeah, I think so. So there's already a there's already a street there, and it just connects. Um, that is that's kind of an indirect way to get to the Beltway. And Wood Woodland Hills actually goes straight down and connects into the Beltway. And then you've got Madera Run and Greens Road or East West corridors that will eventually be built out by developers there in those in those areas. Um, and, and that grid, if you will, is kind of the stuff that we're talking about in terms of options. If we get more options, more capability, more capacity along with those options to get in and around the area, then you know we can see some improvement along other corridors. The CMAC, no, but it is. We did. We do program money uh, in there for timber forest development. We it, it's really kind of a who goes first kind of deal with the developers, but we, we, we have programmed some money in there. And over the course of the bond money, we do anticipate uh, putting some into timber forest. We just haven't identified the exact exact piece yet. So. Uh, last last question. What was the purpose yes. of the new crosswalk coming in on the So, I don't know exactly because it's. No, I know uh, the that's a text dot deal, but what? No, I, I think ultimately what I, th I think I think I'm telling you what I think, not what I know exactly. But I think what the issue is 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 you have to provide refuge uh, areas of refuge, and even though there may not be connective sidewalks all over the place, uh, you know if someone gets caught in there, they've got to have a place to go, and and that place is a mess. A Tascosita in in 1960. <clears throat> well, I don't know about a year. Uh, yeah. Two, 1960? Okay. I'll tell you what, I hope they get it done in two years. That'd be fantastic. But um, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, you're right. It's kind of weird. There's nothing going to it. Uh, I wouldn't put my life in my hands trying to get across that road. Yeah. But I've seen, I've seen a lot of people do it. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Anything else? That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hey, that's you. That's me. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. I, we appreciate you taking the questions and so forth. Uh, next up, we have um, the um, head of our Lake Houston Economic Development Program, uh, Mr. Charlie Dromgoul. You're going to have a hard time seeing these slides unless you got really. There we go. There we go. Um, Well, uh, we've put together a slide presentation. It's really going to take about 40 minutes, so y'all go ahead and sit down and relax. But really, we'll put this on the web. It's on the website, and m most of this information is on the chamber is on the Economic Development Partnership website. So I'll uh, I'll breeze through some of this because I know you can go look at it in more detail there. Uh, but we started this program in 2011, and. We, you know, we've had a great story to tell out here, but we just had never had an organized effort to do it. And this is why we started the Lake Houston Economic Development Partnership, primarily to bring jobs and capital investment to our area. Uh, but we had to do that. We, we don't have half-cent sales tax like a lot of our competitors do. And as you know, with the, all of the different entities we have, there's not any one single entity that, that uh, uh, you know, provides funding for this. So we've had to do it the hard, the old fashioned way and the hard way of a public private partnership. And we've now, uh, uh, these are, these are the, the 34 people that have invested in this program. Uh, this is our fourth, we're in our, we're beginning our fourth year of operation. And this, these are the 34, uh, uh, companies or in, and individuals that have, have, uh, invested in our program. Uh, and, uh, if if any of you would like to, I'll be glad to stay afterward and visit with you about it. Uh, or we could do it like they do it at some of the churches. We'll close the doors and pass the collection plate till uh, we get enough, and then we'll go on. Um, so this year we've had a, a number of new investors, and you can see those here, and we're really uh, proud that these folks have, have stepped up and, and uh, become a part of this, uh, a part of this program. Uh, our, the three uh, major areas that we're focusing out in on are business retention, expansion, recruiting, and attracting new businesses and marketing and branding the Lake Houston area. Uh, we're in the process of developing some collateral material now. This is a, a map that we have that, uh, 
uh, kind of shows our area that's part of our, our marketing package. And uh, I can show you the cover of our, our uh, marketing package. But if you notice, we use the term strategically situated because that's, that's what we feel that this area is in, in terms of the Houston area. We're very strategically situated for uh, a lot of things. So let me tell you about some of the growth that's been going on in our area. Just I'm going to hit it real, real quick. You can get this if you'll go to the Economic Development Partnership website, lakehoustonedp.org, and, and click on our economic overview, and, the, and I'll show you later about an interactive map that we have. Uh, International Tech Park is out on 59, uh, a new 72-acre, uh, 7,000. Uh, 700,000 square foot. Uh, they're going to be building uh, spec facilities for primarily for the logistics industry. Uh, Gateway North Business Park is also on 59 uh, industrial business park. So we're now beginning to get some some traction with some sites and buildings available in our area, which will eventually translate into jobs and capital investment. Uh, International uh, IH Humble Business Center. Uh, for a light in industrial project over on South Houston Avenue. That's part of that area that's been cleared. It's on the back side of that. And then uh, and several projects all around the airport. Duke Realty is doing a number of projects uh, all around uh, uh, IAH. <clears throat> um, we have Atkinson Development uh, is uh, building about 300,000 square feet of new industrial space in the area. Roadrunner Transportation Systems just uh, leased a new facility on 1960 uh, uh, north, just north of Humble. Um, Jetco Delivery uh, uh, has built a 20-acre headquarters campus, uh, and they have about 106 employees. They're right out by the airport. Uh, Dangerous Goods Management has got 150,000 square foot expansion, 220 jobs. And DeLorean Motor Company, how do y'all, y'all didn't know we were in the automotive business here, did you? Auto, uh, DeLorean Motor Company has now gotten approval to, to, build, to build brand new uh, DeLoreans, and they will build, be building about 300 new uh, brand new DeLoreans right here in Humble, Texas. So uh, and when you're coming over the Beltway, when you're coming from Humble going over the, uh, going towards Summerwood, when you come over there, if you'll look down to your right, you'll see DeLorean Motor Company, DMC, and you'll see about 10 or 12, 6 or 8 uh, uh, DeLoreans, refurbished DeLoreans out there. They've bought all the parts from that, and they have them in that warehouse, and it's going to be a, it's a real interesting story. Um, and Sparity is going through a, a major uh, expansion. They're adding a, a new four-story uh, uh, building uh, and this they broke ground will be completing that in 2017 and this Kingwood Main Street is the the project across from the current uh, HEB that uh, they will be going into my guy can't type, type uh, Michael it's that's, that's Michael did that Kotzko uh, he aggied out on me um, he, uh, uh, Costco uh, uh, town, is, is opening in Townsend Landing in this, okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, Sam, thank you very much. Um, oh, we to turn all over. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, but Costco's opening uh, in uh, March 18th, uh, and, uh, and then there's a new housing project around that. FM 1960 has a lot of commercial development on a uh, uh, 50,000 square foot trampoline park. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods is coming to Deerbrook Mall and Back Pew Brewing Company on, on Sarger's Mill Road. It's a uh, craft brewery and an old church. Uh, my, my Baptist preacher daddy would have loved to have gone to that church. <laughs> Uh, here's some other shops at Breakwater, which is on Westlake Houston Parkway, and, and all of this information is on the, the website, because I, I know we're, we're running out of time. This one's being done by Huntington Properties. Um, Showbiz Cinemas, uh, under construction with their 10 screens, 14 bowling lanes, and food court. Uh, Generation Park's got a lot of things going on out there right now. We've got 
Redemption Square, that's that's what they've, it used to be called ESPA, and they've renamed it to Redemption Square. They're, they will be building an 85,000 square foot office, uh, and then the 15,000 of the uh, ground level will be retail. There's a Marriott Courtyard, uh, parking garage, and then eventually they will have uh, this whole area, Redemption Square, will be a, about a million five square feet of Class A office, uh, residential units, hotel rooms, and retail space. So there's, it's going to be a great, uh, great addition to our area. Um, I'm going to go through those quick, but FMC Technologies is is moving in. Uh, they're they will be moving in, phasing in over the next uh, several months, and by by July we'll have it uh, around 1,500 employees. Could be more. Could we, you know? It's just kind of a fluid uh, deal right now. But this is the latest. They told us that most uh, about a thousand of them will be in by the end of April. Uh, Stolt Nielsen's uh, six-acre six site in Generation Park to locate their port facility uh, operation. Uh, San Jacinto College has purchased 57 acres, and their bond issue passed, so that's a good thing for uh, the uh, potential development of that, that acreage. And then Lone Star College, only eight acres of, uh, of Generation Park is in Umbel ISD. And that was purchased by Lone Star College, and they're building a process technology center, and, and that is under construction now. So, I asked Michael to write a letter, and he gave me a book, so I got all this stuff here. Um, oh, Westlake Marketplace, uh, 39,000 square foot of retail that's right across from Generation Park. Uh, Kroger will be the anchor tenant there, and there's a, a lot to come, and they'll have some some walkways to tie into Generation Park. A lot of multifamily growth in the area. There's a number of uh, apartment complexes uh, uh, springing up all around the area, um, and this is uh, this is all on the website, so you can get a better look at it and more detailed. <clears throat> uh, but you can see um, we've, we've really had a lot of growth over the last several years. We have, uh, if you'll look at 2013, we had 6,418 business establishments. In 2015, we had 7,543 establishments. We've grown about 23,000 employees over the last uh, two years. Uh, and this is according to our data, data source that we, provide, that we subscribe to. Our population has, if you look since 2000, we've basically doubled. This this community's doubling, and will continue to. The growth pattern is still uh, very very strong. Um, household growth, you can see that's that's um, growing at a very rapid rate. And then this was an interesting slide. If if the Lake Houston area was a city of 257,000 people. Uh, these are the cities we would be. Com these are the cities we'd be: uh, Buffalo, New York; Fort Wayne, Indiana; St. Petersburg, Florida; Laredo, Madison, Wisconsin; Irving, California. That's the size of the area that we're talking about. Uh, and it's more to come. Uh, uh, PASA Demographics, that does the information for the school district. Is projecting 84, 76 new housing occupancies in 2016, uh, and then uh, over, and then another 8,700 from 2020 to 2025. So that's 17,000 new housing occupancies, and 50% of those will be on Westlake Houston Parkway. So that's. So we got. So what Jeremy was talking about building West Woodland Hills is crucial to this area. I mean, it's just the most. It's the most crucial road project we've got on the books right now. Uh, Umbel ISD. Uh, you've heard uh, all of the stories about the growth and the, the number of 13,000 new students in the next 10 years, six new schools, uh, and then you, we talked about the 1960 improvement project. I won't go into any more detail. But, but please feel free to come and, and take a look at that at the chamber office. And then we, we've talked about Woodland Hills and Lockwood Drive. You know, Lockwood Road is already under construction. 
and then the, the hope is to tie that to Woodland Hills and come all the way up to where it dead ends in Atascacita. Okay, I, I got through this as fast as I could, and here's your uh, www.lakehoustonedp.org that you can, we just redesigned, IT Vibes redesigned our website this year, and, uh, and this is the thing we probably get, we've probably gotten about 15,000 hits on this uh, uh, since we put it on, and it's an interactive map, and you can go on and click on an icon on that map, and it'll tell you what's going on in what particular area. So take advantage of that. It's great information, and then there's a, a, a detailed overview, economic overview that you can print out. Okay, Robert, got through as fast as I could. All right, so all the information he just went through is under on the website. Uh, you see it at the top of the screen, LakeHoustonEDP.org. A lot of great things are happening. Uh, I'm looking at the time, and uh, we did go over a little bit. I have two speakers left and then a few announcements. Uh, we try to make these, these meetings and, and be cognizant of your time, but have relevant, efficient information for you. And I hope you've enjoyed our speakers so far. Uh, and if you'll bear with us, we've got, got two more to go. So at this time, I'd like to uh, have uh, Chief Mike Mulligan uh, with the Task City Volunteer Fire Department come up and kind of talk about what's going on with the fire department. And then after that, we'll have David Otis with the Lake Houston Sports and Recreation Foundation. And then we'll make a few announcements. So we're going to run about 15 minutes over if that's okay. Okay, so these are all of my notes, and uh, we'll dispense with those. Um, my name is Mike Mulligan. I was named the fire chief, uh, chief of department for Harris County ESD 46 at the Atascacita Volunteer Fire Department in May of 2015. I was the interim chief for about eight months before that. I've been the deputy chief uh, for four years before that. That's who I am. Um, basically, what they asked me to do is come here and talk to you about updates for the fire department. Uh, most of you can see probably from Beltway 8 all the way from Porter as well, our new fire station up in Walden because it sticks up above the trees so high. Um, that was a surprise to us. <laughs> it didn't look that big on paper. Um, it was a surprise to some of the neighbors because um, now they can see it over the fence uh, and it wasn't that way before. It's a great facility. Uh, we're going to have a grand opening there on the 16th of April. Uh, probably start between 10.30 and 11 in the morning, and it'll run until people are done going through. There'll be food. There'll be some commemorative items. It's a big deal for us. Um, we've recently replaced our entire fleet of vehicles over the last three years. Um, we're making good progress. You watched in the economic development presentation all the growth that's occurring in the area, right? Um, not all of that is in ESD, 40, in ESD 46, but a good majority of it is in ESD 46, and we're expanding and growing as an organization in order to provide a better public protection class for you through ISO. I know you're all business owners or operators. How many of you actually own business property in the Atascacita area? Oh, okay, so you're familiar with public protect, or, uh, public protection class through ISO with your insurance rates, right? We're currently a class three in our entire district. We believe that we can lower that class and get you a better rate, okay? Uh, that's gonna force us to do some things differently that we do in the fire department. It's gonna require us to channel our money in different directions. Um, we're healthy as an organization. We're doing well with our sales and property tax collections. Um, we're staffing uh, three ambulances 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as soon as we open this new building in March, or I'm sorry, in, uh, in April. Um, we're staffing two fire apparatus 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, these are things that weren't happening five, six years ago in the organization. So that's an update on the fire department. Uh, I'd take questions, but I don't know that I have enough time. Uh, a couple questions. So rather than me stand up here and drone on about a lot of things, Let's answer questions. Anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. We go from the city of Humble, the city limits of the city of Humble, uh, which is at Townsend, uh, Townsend Road in 1960, which runs all the way south 
to uh, Lindsay Lyons Park and then comes back west all the way to um, Lake, excuse me, Lake Houston. And then we go from the river to the railroad tracks. We're, we're actually, we, we cover about half of the grove. The other half is covered by ESD 10 and ESD 1, which is further south. So if you go down past the bridge over the railroad tracks, probably another mile-ish is probably where the line cuts over and runs cross country to the back of the lyncher jail. So well, that's, it's the state jail over off of uh, Tacita Road. So. Okay, that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sir. Thanks for being here. All right, David Otis with the Lake Houston Sports and Recreation Foundation. He's talked to us a, a few times over the years, and he's got some great news to share with us today. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for having me out again. A couple things I want to do today is uh, update you on the progress of the Lake Houston Sports and Recreation Foundation. Has anyone heard of us? Know what we do? I left some information around here. There's a flyer, kind of give you the cliff notes. Also, hopefully we can get in. We put a short presentation together. Um, it's a video on a loop with a little music background to kind of let you know what we do. Uh, the Lake Houston Sports and Recreation Foundation is a nonprofit organization. We created um, ourselves about, about five years ago, and one of the reasons why we started it was really is to look out for Lake Houston. Um, owning a real estate company out here for, for many, many years and selling real estate and growing up out here on Lake Houston, we always were asked the question, so what's up with Lake Houston? You know, what's, what's going on? You know, what's, what's the issues? And we decided to start a nonprofit to start talking about what this lake means to our area and what it does for us as far as an asset and how it, in, it can improve this area moving forward. So... Um, what we've done is started this fabulous organization, but a couple things about Lake Houston. Does anyone have any clue on when Lake Houston was built? Anyone have any idea? 1956, that's correct. And it was built to replace the Sheldon Reservoir for the city of Houston's water supply. Um, Lake Houston's surface area is 11,854 acres. The maximum depth, depth, believe it or not, is 45 feet. <laughs> yeah, and the largest um, black bass caught on the lake is 10 pounds, 0.47 ounces. Can anyone guess the largest catfish ever caught on Lake Houston? Pretty close, 65 pounds. And right now, guesstimations are we have anywhere from eight to 10 families of bald eagles that are living on Lake Houston. Really cool stuff. And has anyone heard about the Bayou, the Lucis Bayou Canal Project? It's a canal coming in from the Trinity River. They just announced in construction to begin. That's going to bring an additional 500 million gallons of water into the Lucis Bayou a day. A day. Pretty interesting stuff. So um, a couple things. What I really want to do is, is this, this little clip is about four and a half minutes long. A um, couple quick announcements. We have a golf tournament coming up. We're raising money to help with our vegetation habitat, okay, which where we're introducing beneficial plants into Lake Houston. Because we're a small organization, all volunteers with no overhead, all the money that we raise goes directly into Lake Houston. We're also called the Lake Houston Sports and Recreation Foundation because we also work a lot with the area kids and youth to help them get involved in the lake and you'll see on this video what kind of stuff we do with the kids. It's fabulous stuff. So I will be around to answer any questions and talk about this golf tournament. And, of course, if you wanted to get involved, we'd love to have you. Lazy yellow moon coming up to tonight, shining through the trees. Crickets are singing in a light. Bugs are floating on the breeze Baby, get ready Crying 
Across the field where the creek turns back by the old stump road I'm gonna take you to a special place that nobody knows Baby, give 